How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the blood breather and got harem with Mocha. Part 1. Huge shout out to Kagami Kaihara for this story. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Senjutsu Nade, the Gondai Mei Hokage of Konoha, groaned in annoyance as she thought over the council's latest ruling regarding the QB Jinchuriki, Yuzumaki Naruto. I don't see why they can't just leave the kid alone. It's not as if he's done anything wrong. She thought, frowning as she netted her fingers together in front of her face. A knock at her office door broke her from her thoughts, to which she responded with an exhausted come in. The door opened, revealing the visitor to be a tall boy with blonde hair and bright blue eyes, wearing a red jacket emblazoned with black flames over an orange and black jumpsuit. The strangest things about him, however, were the three thin whisker marks on each cheek, the pointed orange ears atop his head, and the furry orange tail swaying to and fro from under his jacket. He wanted to see me, Bachan. He asked, looking around the room with a bored expression on his vulpine features. Yes, unfortunately. The council has made yet another decision regarding your situation within the village, she replied, continually glancing to the drawer that kept her sake bottle. She looked up to find Naruto with the same bored expression on his face. You don't seem too surprised. Why should I? They've been making decisions for me my whole life. Now, I just forget to care a lot of the time. Well then, in that case, you won't be too surprised by their decision. They've decided that you're too dangerous to be kept in the village, especially with the recent pain situation. So, despite the fact that I saved this ungrateful village from a crazed ex in with a god complex and the rest of his insane henchmen, managed to effectively destroy the strongest of all demons by stealing its chakra and survived the Senen training on my Abakuzin while perfecting an S-class jutsu which I myself created, they still feel the need to banish me. Not banish, per se. More like, send you somewhere you can learn to control your new power, then you can come back. You had to work hard to allow that, didn't you? Naruto asked, staring right into Tsunade's eyes, his eyes changed to an icy blue. Damn, this kid is too good a shinobi. Tsunade though, sweat dropping. So, where are you sending me? High school. Huh? Shizune gave me a leaflet yesterday. She said that a priest had dropped it, Tsunade said, digging through her drawers, before she came upon a small white leaflet which she handed to Naruto. The blonde shinobi read through the folded piece of paper, occasionally humming or raising an eyebrow. He closed the leaflet when he had finished and threw it back onto the desk. Yaokai Academy, huh? Sounds alright. When do I leave? Tomorrow. I tried to garner more time, but the council wouldn't allow it. You have tonight to pack your things, then you'll be picked up in the morning by a member of the school staff. Well then, I guess I'll be seeing you tomorrow, Bachan. If I don't, I'll just say goodbye now, Naruto said as he turned to the door. Don't act like this is the last time you'll be here. You'll be coming back, I promise. Don't worry if you can't, Bachan. It's not as if I'll miss this place. I'll be going now, I have to pack for school. The next day. Hanohe's former resident Jinchuriki stood at the village gates with a bag on his back and a suitcase in hand. He faced the village, each of his friends standing before, many carrying boxes of various shapes and sizes. Well, I guess this is it, guys, he said, grinning at his friends. They smiled sadly as Shikamaru stepped forwards. He pulled a scroll from his pocket and handed it to Naruto. I did some research on this school of yours. This is what you'll need to survive. Don't open it until you get there. Though, knowing a troublesome blonde like you, you won't listen, he said, stepping back as Naruto pocketed the scroll. Next Chaoji stepped forward with a box, a Raymond bowl printed on the side. I got all your favorite flavors, and lots of them. Don't eat them all at once, the Akamichi said as he stood next to his shadow-wielding friend. Ino came forward next, tears in her eyes as she handed Naruto a large red and orange flower. This is an orange daylily. I want you to take care of it and show it to me when you get back just promise you'll come back. She asked and smiled when she saw Naruto grin and nod. Kiba walked up next and handed Naruto a small wooden box, which he opened to reveal what was inside. A pair of black gloves with long metal claws that covered the entire finger, the back sticking outwards when he clenched his fist, with the blade end reaching far past the fingertip. Naruto was gobsmacked at the craftsmanship and looked up at Kiba to see him grinning. You like him, Foxy? I got my cousin to make him for you. The metal of the claws is perfect for chakra conducting, so you can use your futon chakra to make him even sharper. Whoa, thanks mutt. I'll put these to good use. Naruto said, placing the box in his suitcase. Kiba stepped back, giving way to Shino, who walked forward with a cloud of bugs following him, carrying a large glass tank. This is a bug tank. Try collecting different kinds of bugs at this school. Then you can bring them back and show me when you come back. Just try to recognize me we when you return this time. Shino said, and though his face was hidden by his coat, Naruto could have sworn he saw a smirk. 
Mom, you're still sore about that. Naruto said, grinning when he heard Shino's small chuckle. He sealed the tank as Shino's insects retreated inside his body. Tenten walked forward, pulling out two familiar scrolls from the scroll holder on her back. Tenten, you're giving me this Ashoryu. Yep. I have another copy, so don't worry. Plus, for everything you've done you deserve it. She said, smiling as she stepped back to stand with the rest of Naruto's friends. Her stoat teammate, Yuganiji, came forward next. He pulled a small book with a flame symbol on the cover out of his backpack and handed it to the blonde shinobi. This is a copy of the Jiuken basic technique manual. Even if you don't want to use our style or feel it dishonorable, I want you to try to learn it. Just in case you should need it. You sure? Naruto asked, looking at the cover of the book. Yes. Look at it this way, if you learn it, you can customize it. Make an entirely new style, Niji told him, bringing sparkles into Naruto's eyes. Niji chuckled at his friend's childishness before moving back to stand with Tenten as Lee, surprisingly, walked forward. Here, Naruto-kun. I have procured a book on Tejutsu styles for you. It lists our own Gaokin style including several others. Train with this book and become a truly splendid ninja. Lee shouted, making most of the crowd sweat drop at his antics. He walked back to his teammates as Kakashi, Kurenai and Guy walked forward. Kurenai placed a scroll in his hand, Guy a set of weights, and Kakashi a large box. He looked at the scroll, seeing that it was a scroll on Gain Jutsu. I know that you're still lacking when it comes to illusions, so I thought this would help you. Kurenai said, gesturing to the scroll. These weights will allow you to reach greater heights in your Tejutsu abilities, Naruto-kun. Use them and let your flames of youth burn brightly. Guy shouted, everyone sweat dropping again. I have here something so precious you will not ever want to stop using it. Just be sure to keep it safe and use it the way it was meant to be used. Kakashi said, his visible eyes shining. Naruto opened the box and his eyes started twitching when he saw the contents. Kakashi sensei, this is a set of Icha Icha books. I know, it's the greatest gift ever, right? Kakashi said with an eye smile as he used his swirly thumbs up no jutsu. Everyone sweat dropped a third time. The three Jounin stepped back to stand with their respective students or Team 10 in Kakashi's case, as he had been taking several missions with them. Tsunade stepped forward and placed a large scroll in Naruto's arms. What's this, Tsunade Bachin? Naruto asked, looking at the large rolled up piece of paper in his possession. This is your heritage. It's from your father, it contains all of his special techniques, Tsunade said, smiling when she saw Naruto's hopeful expression. Does that mean inside this scroll is the Hirai? Don't tell everyone. Just keep it a secret, open it when you get to school. Speaking of which, when am I leaving? The staff member should be arriving soon. How is he arriving? The leaflet said something about a large yellow vehicle I think it was called a bus, Tsunade said, but stopped as she heard a strange sound, similar to a roar in the distance. Through the trees that lined the path to the village came a large yellow object with wheels, driven by a strange man with glowing yellow eyes. I think that's it, Kakashi said, staring at the odd vehicle. Really, what would give you that idea? Shikamaru said sarcastically. The bus stopped beside the crowd, opening its folding door to reveal the yellow-eyed man grinning at Naruto. You coming, kid? Yeah, just give me a sec Naruto started, but was cut off by a loud shout coming from the village. Naruto-kun. Everyone turned to see Hinata standing in the middle of the street. Where are you going? Nobody told Hinata, did they? Naruto asked the crowd, who all sweat dropped yet again. Eh, guess Akinda slipped our minds. Kiba said, scratching the back of his head. Why are you leaving? We just started getting to know each other properly she said, tears running down her pale cheeks. It's not my choice, Hinata-chan. The council they're making me go. But I'll be back, I promise. Naruto said, looking into Hinata's eyes. A few more tears fell from her eyes before she wrapped her arms around his neck, crying into his jacket. She stayed there for a few seconds before letting go and kissing his cheek. She smiled seeing Naruto's light blush. You better come back. If you don't, I'll just have to hunt you down, won't I? The pale-eyed Kinoichi said, making a shiver run down Naruto's spine. He turned back to the bus, seeing the bus driver beginning to get impatient. He hurried onto the bus, loading his luggage into the side compartment. The mechanical door closed, separating Naruto and his friends. He sat in a seat by the window, waving to his friends. He saw Hinata cry into her cousin's shoulder as he left. In fact, quite a few of his friends were crying. You come from a small town, kid? The driver asked, tilting his head to ask his passenger. I guess you could say that. A while later. Here we are, kid. Yaokai Academy. Be careful, it's a terrifying school. The bus driver told the blonde ninja as he exited the bus. The doors closed and the bus left before Naruto could ask what he meant. 
He shrugged and grabbed his suitcase before walking between the gray, dead trees that lined the path, along with several skulls and gravestones. What is this, some kind of goth school? He thought, looking around his macabre surroundings. His ears twitched and he jumped back, narrowly avoiding a swarm of bats flying out of a hollow tree. His ears twitched again as he heard a strange metallic whirring noise, getting louder and louder as it neared him. The crash was heard, and Naruto turned just in time to see a particularly beautiful girl with pink hair riding a bike, before said bike crashed into his stomach. Both people and metallic vehicle were sent flying across the path, the bike's wheels becoming mangled and bent as Naruto, and the girl flew in the opposite direction. Once the shinobi cleared his head, he found his hand had landed on something remarkably soft. He squeezed the soft object and heard a soft gasp from somewhere above him. He looked up to find his hand had landed on the girl's thigh, dangerously close to her thigh. He quickly removed his hand and looked up at the girl. She had bright pink hair, even brighter than Sakura's, with one strange cowlick in the middle of her head, while bright green eyes shone from under her fringe. She wore a green jacket, a brown skirt and a plain white shirt that was open slightly, revealing a small amount of cleavage, along with a sliver rosary adorned with a single red bead. Naruto stood up and dusted himself off, before offering a hand to the girl and helping her up. She stood up precariously which didn't last, as she fell against Naruto with a slightly glazed look in her eyes. Sorry, she said as she looked up at him, I get kinda dizzy because of my anemia. It's okay. Are you sure you're alright? Naruto asked, looking at the girl with a worried expression. I'm fine, I'm just oh, you're bleeding. She exclaimed, looking at the gash on his hand. Naruto looked at his hand in confusion. Yeah, I guess I am he replied, but his mind was moving much faster. Why am I bleeding? Surely the yaki I got from QP should have healed it straight away. He was broken from his thoughts as he felt something sniffing his hand. He looked down to find the girl's face in his palm, sniffing the blood staining his skin. Suddenly, she moved her head from his hand and up to his neck in one fluid motion. She opened her mouth, bearing long fangs. I'm sorry, you just smell so good it's all because I'm a vampire. She said, sinking her fangs into his neck. Naruto winced slightly as the sharp teeth pierced his skin, but the pain quickly disappeared. She began drinking the precious crimson liquid like there was an infinite source, which, effectively, there was. Eventually she pulled her fangs from his neck and licked lips, looking up to her victim. He was staring at her blankly, as if nothing had happened. Finished? He asked. You're not surprised or scared or in pain or even angry at me? She asked, confused. Not really. I guess I'm used to people biting other people. Especially after the Orochimaru situation. Reeeeeite so, what's your name? She asked, her hands held behind her back as she leant forward in a way Naruto couldn't help but find cute. Isn't it common courtesy to give your own name before asking another's? He replied, remembering Sasuke's response to Niji in the Chunin exams. Oh, right, sorry. I'm Akashi Yamoka, a freshman here at Yakai Academy. Yuzumaki Naruto, also a freshman. Oh, how great. Maybe we'll be in the same class. Yeah, maybe. Uh, is there some kind of uniform for this school? He asked, noticing how their clothes were completely different. Uh. Weren't you sent a uniform? Uh, no. I didn't know I was coming here until yesterday. In that case, there should be a uniform in your dorm. I didn't get a key. Just look in your pocket, she said enigmatically. He shrugged his shoulders and put a hand in his pocket, not entirely sure what this would accomplish. Eventually, his fingers closed around something that wasn't there before. He pulled it out, revealing it to be a small silver key. That's kinda creepy, he said, confused. In the boy's dorm. Naruto stood before a plain green door with a small sign placed on it, reading his name. He pushed the key he retrieved from his pocket into the lock and turned it, pushing the door open. He looked around the room before and found it eerily familiar to his apartment in Kanoha. It even had the same leaf symbol poster above the bed. He placed his suitcase and bag on the floor before unsealing his Raymond cups and began placing them in cupboards. Then he found a chest of drawers in the corner, which he placed Shino's bug tank on top of. He then placed Hino's flower on his bedside cabinet, along with the Icha Icha books, placed the technique scrolls and books on the desk by the window, and put the box with Kiba's gloves inside next to them. Once everything had been put away he collapsed onto his bed, sprawling himself out onto the orange bed covers as he looked around the room. His eyes rested upon a clock hung on the wall, and immediately he felt something in his pocket. He reached into it again and pulled out a folded piece of paper he knew hadn't been there before. Naruto opened it, revealing it to be a schedule of some kind. He noticed that if he didn't get going now, he'd be seriously late for homeroom. He literally jumped from the bed into the air and ran to the wardrobe, where he knew his uniform would be waiting. He pulled a plain white shirt and a pair of brown trousers on over a set of Anbu armor, just in case. 
He then slipped the green jacket on top and tied his tie loosely around his neck. He grabbed his bag, having already packed it and ran out of the door. Naruto started to run down the corridor, but remembered something. The shinobi walked back to his door, locked it, put a hinge over his ears and tails and vanished. In the classroom. Welcome, first years, to Yaokai Academy. This is a school for Nekunim Shizuka started to tell her class, but was cut off by the door slamming open and a blonde boy running into the classroom. Sorry, Nekunim sensei Naruto shouted as he ran to an empty seat by the window. He sat down and pulled his bag, rummaging through it as he unloaded his things. You're Yuzumaki-kun, correct? It's alright, just make sure it doesn't happen again. She said, before beginning again. Welcome first years, to Yaokai Academy. This is a school for M. Tsumimasen, sensei. Another voice shouted as the door was slammed open yet again. Naruto looked up from his bag to find the rosette from earlier, Mocha, standing in the doorway. He also noticed that the entire male population of the class was staring at her with hearts in their eyes, many of them drooling and giggling lecherously. He grinned at his pink-haired friend, who smiled back. However, where he stopped there, she didn't. She decided to tackle him from across the room, jumping onto him shouting Naruto. We're in the same class. I'm so glad. Many of the lusty stares turned to hateful and jealous glares as they saw the beautiful girl jumping into the shinobi's arms. She stayed there with her arms around his neck for a few seconds before Nekunim decided that was enough. She cleared her throat noisily, causing Mocha to jump, unlatch herself from Naruto's neck, and jump into the seat behind him, all in one fluid motion. If everyone's done, may I finish now? The cat-like teacher asked, getting nods from around the room. Good. Now then, where was I? Ah yes. Welcome to Yaokai Academy. As you all know, this school is a school for monsters. Naruto's eyes widened and he looked nervously around the room, looking at each of the students in turn. He noticed that not all were as normal as others. After surveying the entire class, he decided on a single thought. I'm so screwed. This school was set up to teach young Yaokai of harmony when it comes to living with humans. Nekunim said as Naruto sweat bullets in his seat. But why can't we just eat the humans? A boy with brown hair slicked back said from the seat beside Naruto. Because that's not nice, Kamiya-kun. And if I hear you say that again, you'll be in detention for a week. The feline teacher said with a sickly sweet smile. The boy looked away, noticing Naruto's nervousness. You know, I think I smelt a human scent from somewhere over here he said with a smirk. Naruto turned away from him, staring out the window at some random bird. So sensei, what if a human were to make his way onto our campus? Well, he'd be killed upon discovery. Nekunim said casually, making Naruto worry even more. Damn it, why am I worrying? I'm technically not human anymore, even if I can't use all of QP's power. He thought, shaking off his worries. Little did he know one person had caught on to his secret. Why did he get all worried when Saizu asked about humans unless no, he couldn't be but oh no. This is bad. Very, very bad. Mocha thought as she stared at the back of Naruto's head, suddenly incredibly worried for Naruto's safety. After class, Mocha followed Naruto as he walked, strangly, in the opposite direction of their next class. It seemed, even, as if he was heading for the bus stop. Naruto. Where are you going? She shouted, making the blonde Jinchuriki turn. To the bus. But why? Don't tell me you're leaving. Mocha, you don't understand. I understand more than you know, Naruto. I realize that you're keeping secrets. I know you feel like you're surrounded by people would rather eat you than be friends with you. So, you figured it out, huh? How I may well, I guess you're half right. What do you mean, you're a human, right? Eh, uh, I used to be. Then I met a certain fuzzball, and things went downhill from there. Fuzzball. Ever heard of the QB no Yako? Naruto said, making Mocha's eyes widen. Yeah, that's the one. It kinda got sealed inside me when I was born, and I've had to live with that burden for my whole life. I've been hated, beaten, almost killed, ignored hell, so many bad things I can't even count anymore. Then, a few months ago, I used too much of fuzzball's power. I somehow absorbed the beast itself, and became it, in a way. I gained all of its power. So why were you leaving if you aren't technically human? I wasn't actually leaving. I was just gonna get a letter sent back to Konoha. Naruto said, making Mocha sweat drop. He chuckled and was about to say something, but was cut off by someone else speaking. So, you're Akashi Mocha, huh? Why do you hang around trash like this, huh? When you could be with a real man, like me Saizu said as he walked towards them. Ugh, what do you want? Naruto asked, before being backhanded into a wall. Don't you dare speak to me, trash. So, how about it, Mocha? Wanna take a ride with me? Just leave us alone, Saizu. Heh, wrong answer. Saizu said, before his muscles started bulging from under his school uniform. His skin began to turn green as he grew to an incredible size. 
Metal bracers materialized on his forearms as a piece of ragged hide did around his waist. What Saizu had transformed into was truly a monster sight. This is my true form, an orc. First, I'm gonna kill the blondie, then I'll make you my woman whether you like it or not. He shouted, swinging his fist at the Jinchuriki, who flipped backwards. Naruto grabbed onto the top of a gravestone and crouched on it, similar to some kind of canine. He stared at the ground, his hair covering his eyes from view. Do you think you're the only monster here? I'll show you a true demon. Naruto yelled, his voice becoming demonic as he looked up. His eyes were crimson with a black slit down the middle, his whiskers had become darker and more defined, while his hinge dropped, revealing his fox ears and tail, the latter swaying in the air. Naruto unsealed his gloves from a space on his belt and slipped them on, the blades immediately igniting with crimson flames. I am QB no Yako and you are my prey. Naruto disappeared from the gravestone, leaving deep cracks in the carved rock. He reappeared in front of Saizu, swinging his claws at the green-skinned yaokai. The claws shredded the skin of his chest, leaving a deep gash with burn marks around the edges. Saizu roared in pain as he stumbled backwards from the force of the blow. The orc swung his fist again, which Naruto dodged, jumping off to the side. But it didn't work, as Saizu's fist caught his leg, sending him spinning into a tree. Dust flew into the air from the impact, but that was quickly swept away by a breeze passing through the area. Naruto stood up, red chakra swirling around his form as he let out a low growl. Suddenly, the Jinchuriki's eyes widened and he fell to his knees, clutching his head in pain. Did you think you could get rid of me that easy? I'll be with you forever, Naruto-kun. There's no changing that. Loka ran over to the fallen Naruto and grabbed hold of his shoulders while Naruto reached out to her. His claws wrapped themselves around Mocha's rosary and swiftly pulled it off, Mocha's eyes widening as an incredible amount of yaki surrounded them. Nobody should be able to remove it not even me. She thought as the sky turned red, a swarm of bats flying down from the blood red moon. The bats surrounded her, literally covering her in them. The pain in Naruto's head passed and he looked over at the mocha-shaped swarm of bats before looking back at the terrified Saizu. Hey, Greenskin. What's going on? This can't be a vampire he stuttered out as he stared, paralyzed with fear, at the young vampire. Naruto looked back at Mocha to see the swarm of bats disappearing, flying from her body to reveal Mocha with a few changes. Her bright pink hair was now silver, her green eyes now blood red and slitted, similar to Naruto's own. Mocha. Stay back, Yuzumaki. This is my fight now. She said, before running at Saizu. He broke himself from his fearful stupor and quickly moved to crush Mocha under his fist, but she stopped it with her own before continuing. She ran to his legs and kicked them out from under him, knocking him over. She then reared her leg back before swinging it upwards into Saizu's chin, shattering his jaw and sending him into the sky. Know your place. She shouted as the orc disappeared into the sky. Mocha turned back to Naruto and took the rosary from his clawed grasp. She placed it back on the chain, the pressure of her yaki disappearing altogether. Once back to her pink-haired self, the vampire fell, exhausted from using her yaokai. Naruto caught her as she lifted her head, putting her mouth to his neck. Hapuchu. The next day. Good morning everyone. Please take your seats. Now, today, will be Nekanam said, before Naruto tuned her out, instead deciding to look out of the window at nothing in particular, before his eyes became dull and lifeless as he entered a meditative state. He opened his eyes, finding himself in the familiar sewer tunnel of his mindscape. He ran along the flooded pipes, heading for one place in particular. He noticed the markings he had made on the wall as directions. The shinobi turned into a large room filled with broken pieces of stone, the remnants of some kind of stone cage at the other end, covered in shadow. He walked between the debris, looking around at the destruction present in his mind. He stopped just before the destroyed bars, staring into the shadows at the end of the room. QB. I know you're in there. Come out, or I'll just come find you. He shouted into the darkness, not afraid of what lurked within. A laugh sounded throughout his mindscape, sending shivers through his body. It wasn't that it sounded demonic or bestial in any way, it was simply dark. The girl of around Naruto's age walked out of the shadows, her long crimson hair reaching to the back of her knees. She wore a long black dress that hugged her figure spectacularly, with a black lace choker around her neck, a golden rosary hanging from it. Several red flowers were placed in her hair above where her ears would be. On top of her head were two red fox ears, and a red fox tail swayed from under her dress, similar to Naruto's, both matching her crimson eyes. She walked up to Naruto, swaying her hips as she did, while Naruto simply stood there, his face emotionless. Oh, it's so good to see you again, Naruto-kun. I thought I'd never see your handsome face again. She said as she walked around him, stroking a finger along his neck. Aren't you glad to see me? Not particularly, for most of my life you've either been trying to kill me or take over my body. I'm sorry if it's hard to miss someone who does that. 
Oh, you're still holding on to that old grudge. I say we let bygones be bygones and get to know each other a little better, huh, Naruto Kuun? She asked, stretching out the suffix in a seductive manner. Don't play games with me, QB. You should be dead after I took your power. How are you still alive? Oh, alright. I guess we'll just have to play another time. I'm still alive because Shinigami-sama owed me a favor. Why? What did you do for him? I kept you alive. Your father asked a favor of Shinigami-sama, he asked him to look after you. Now, well the death god couldn't do this himself, obviously, he chose the next person. The person who would be with you till the day you die. So, as payment for keeping me alive, you were kept from dying. Exactly. But now, as a result of you taking all of my chakra, I'm no better than a regular ninja. So you're human now? Not exactly, but I might as well be. But oh well, at least I get to spend an eternity with you. As she jumped at the blonde shinobi, throwing her arms around his neck as she pushed his face into her chest. Naruto grabbed hold of her sides and lifted the smaller demon off of him and placed her back on the ground. You may be a demon still, but right now, I'm stronger. And bigger. Naruto said, making the kitsune pout cutely. He looked away as QB grinned in victory. So, what am I supposed to call you? What do you mean? Well, I can't exactly call you QB. I'm the QB, you don't even have one tail yet. He told her. The demon put a finger to her forehead and thought. Well, I guess you'll have to call me something. Call me Rearn. Is that your name then? Nope, it's the name of a stuffed duck that talks in an anime I watched. Okay. Oh, by the way, could you perhaps try to release me? Now why would I do that? How do I know you won't try to destroy everything when I do? Two simple reasons. One, you're much stronger than me. You could keep me in line, she said with a wink, and two, if I were to destroy everything, I wouldn't be able to spend any time alone with you, now would I? I suppose I guess I'll get right on that. When I don't have school work, that is. Ah uh, yes, school. The bane of any teenager. Well, any human teenager. Demon school was actually quite enjoyable. Oh yeah? What was so good about it? We got to eat humans. And our classmates, in fact. Or was that just me? I am now glad Yaokai Academy exists. Naruto Naruto. Wake up, sleepyhead. A distant voice shouted from somewhere. Naruto looked around, before looking straight up at the ceiling. Mocha. Guess it's time for me to wake up. Naruto. What's wrong with you? Wake up. Mocha hissed to him, trying not to be heard by their teacher. Wow, oh, sorry, Mocha-san. Guess I was a little distracted. He said, smiling nervously at his Rosette friend. Little did he know that one blue-haired girl sitting two seats away from him was glaring at the pair, evil thoughts in her head as she laid it down on her arms. Akashi Mocha I will not lose to you. Yaokai Academy will be mine. Mocha, you know I'm not your breakfast, right? Naruto asked as the vampiric Rosette sank her fangs into his jugular once again. She pulled her mouth away when she had taken her fill and licked her lips. Sorry Naruto, but you just taste so good. She half shouted, making several people bluish from the unintended innuendo. Naruto simply shook his head and raised a hand to his neck, checking for a wound. Surprisingly, there wasn't one. Then he remembered that vampire saliva supposedly had incredible healing capabilities, coupled with his own. He made a mental note to thank Shikamaru profusely when he next saw him. The scroll he had given him was information on monsters. Suddenly, he heard someone breathing heavily and whispering a call for help. Hey Mocha. Why don't you head on up to class, I'll meet you there. I gotta check something first. He told her, to which Mocha nodded before skipping happily into the building. Once she was out of sight, Naruto walked around the side of the building to a stream he had used a couple of times for suit and chakra training. On the other side was a girl with sky blue hair and violet eyes, wearing the school's alternate uniform. She was on her hands and knees on the ground, panting heavily. Naruto walked quickly to the small bridge that crossed the stream and over to the girl. Hey, are you okay? He asked, getting ever closer to the girl. She looked up, a hand placed on the side of her head, as if she had a headache. All of a sudden I got a little dizzy it was at this moment that Naruto noticed just how beautiful she was, along with her bountiful assets. I'm sorry, but could you please give me a hand? Yeah, sure Naruto said, placing his hands on her upper arms and gently lifting her to her feet. However, instead of standing upright, she decided to lean against Naruto, her head on his chest. He asked once again if she was alright, but the only answer he received was the girl rubbing her chest up and down against him. Naruto, of course, being a healthy male teenager and being trained by Kakashi and Jiraiya, did not dislike this experience. He just didn't let it show, not wanting to seem perverted. Not yet, anyway. Is something wrong? The girl asked, exchanging the movements for simply pressing herself against the blonde shinobi. No, nothing. Anyways, we better get you to the infirmary, nah. 
Naruto said, helping the girl to walk as spider head still rested on his chest. Thanks for your help. The girl said with a smirk appearing on her face, hidden from Naruto. Meanwhile, inside the main building. I wonder where Naruto is he didn't show up at all for homeroom, and he's already late for our first class I'm gonna go find him. Mocha thought before running off to find her friend. In front of the school. Naruto and the blue-haired girl had reached the courtyard in front of the school, having to move slowly to compensate for the girl's seemingly non-existent ailment. Sorry to bother you, Naruto-kun. The girl said as she walked very close to the demonic ninja. Oh, it's Nafi Wait, how did you know my name? Naruto asked, narrowing his eyes at the girl's slip up. The girl thought for a moment before answering with a remotely plausible excuse. Geez, aren't we in the same class? Really? I guess I never noticed. Yeah, see? The girl said before looking off to the side absently. Naruto looked to where she was, seeing absolutely nothing. He could have sworn, though, that he had seen a ghostly apparition in the form of their homeroom. The girl looked back to his confused face and laughed. She's pretty cute, but she's a monster too, right? I wonder what type she is Naruto thought, before he held out his arms as the girl collapsed against him once again. Hey, are you sure you're okay? Sumimasen. I've been weak ever since I was born. Sometimes my freests will she replied, making Naruto's eyes widen and a blush to rise on his face. Squeeze just like this, like it's about to burst. She cried as she rubbed herself against him again. It's bouncing it's squeezing see, so much she panted out before stopping. Naruto-kun. Huh? What is it? Naruto asked, surprisingly calm. Look at my eyes. She said as she looked up at him. I'm Kurono Kurumu, please be my friend. Naruto suddenly lost all control of his body as he was mesmerized by her violet spheres. Wait a minute charm. Damn, succubus. Naruto thought as he remembered the entry on them in the scroll. Their charm ability could be used to control those of the male persuasion through direct eye contact. He felt himself wrap his arms around Kurumu and begin hugging her tightly while she continued to rub herself against him. He stopped, however, as he sensed another, more familiar presence. Naruto who's she? Mocha asked as she saw Naruto with his arms around Kurumu. My, aren't we in the same class? Isn't that right, Naruto-kun? Kurumu asked as she struck Naruto's chest, surprised at the muscle she found there. Yes yeah, same class Naruto said before grabbing hold of Kurumu once again, holding her close. Mocha's eyes widened in shock as Kurumu grabbed hold of Naruto's hand and began to drag him away. Let's go, Naruto-kun. Class is about to start. She said as she looked up at him again, the mesmerizing feeling washing over him once more. Wait, Naruto. Mocha cried as she walked after them. No, I am not gonna wait for you. Cause Mocha will treat me as her breakfast again. Naruto said, Mocha's eyes widening in shock again as she registered what Naruto had said. Naruto's mind grinded to a halt as his inner self screamed at him to grow a pair and overthrow the succubus mind trick. That's so mean, treating you as food. Let's get going before you get eaten. Kurumu said as they left for class, leaving Mocha standing there on the verge of tears. In class. While Kurumu and Mocha glared at each other from behind him, Naruto slipped into his meditative state again in order to escape to the confines of his mind. Once in there, he found that he had appeared in a completely different room, one he had never visited before. He looked into the depths of the room to see many large dark shapes in the shadows, with a few faces flitting in between. None of these were happy, though, nor were they unfamiliar. They were all the faces of his friends and teammates, their mouths open in silent screams as they moved around in the darkness. What is this Riran? Is this your doing? He shouted out, his voice echoing through the tunnels of his mindscape. He began to walk into the darkness at the end of the room, but stopped as something materialized before him. It seemed to be a large eye, made out of the shadows it was enshrouded in. It opened, revealing no pupil or iris, simply a blank wide eye. The fox has had no hand in this, child. This is all you. A deep voice sounded throughout the room, seemingly coming from the eye, which blinked a few times as a normal eye would. Naruto tried to walk around it, but found it following him as he moved. Who are you, and what is this? I am you, boy. The fears you harbor, the hate you isolate, the darkness you contain. What are you talking about? What is there to fear? True, you fear no foreign threat. You are far too strong to be afraid of any creature, human or demon. Therefore, logically, the only thing you can fear is yourself. Tell me when you start making sense. You fear that the immense power you hold could put your precious people in danger, even hurt them directly. You fear that you could lose control and kill those around you. Tsunade Kakashi Hinata Kibashikamaru even little Sasuke the eye said, the person's face appearing with a silent scream as it said their name. Okay why are you here? Why now? Now that you have the full power of the QP, your fears have amplified to the point that they have become sentient they have become me. 
That is why you agreed to go to this place, because you felt you would be protecting your Nakama from harm. But now there are new people in your heart that you fear to get close to. People you would hurt if you get too close. What a crock look, what's your point? My point? My point is that to stop the cycle of fear, you must cut off all ties to humanity. You're kidding me. There's no way I'm gonna give up on humanity. Then you must live in fear, child. Just know that in time, you will have to give in to your fear unless you destroy its source. Remember my name, boy. Kaiufu, the embodiment of fear, lives within you for now. But soon, unless you destroy your fear, I will break free of this prison, and your soul will finally be mine the I told him, before fading into the shadows that created it. Naruto simply turned away and walked back into the tunnel, but didn't get more than four steps before collapsing. Is what that thing said true? I have to give up on mankind in order to get rid of my fears, or I become fear itself. Naruto said as he knelt down in the murky waters of his mindscape. No I'll find another way I'll control this power and use it against him. When the time comes, I will not let this power hurt anyone but him. Back in the classroom. Yuzumaki-kun Yuzumaki-kun. Nekunam shouted to the semi-comatose shinobi. When he finally awoke, he shook his head to clear his mind before looking up to the teacher. Sorry, what was that? I asked you a question. Which cat-loving author wrote I am a cat? The fake version. She asked, making Naruto put a hand to his forehead in thought. That'd be Ichida Hayakin, real name Ichida Aizo. Naruto answered, surprising the teacher. I'm okay, I guess I'll let you off for sleeping. But don't do it again. You hear? Hi, hi. I need to get Kaiufu off my mind for now and focus on the issue at hand. Kurumu and Mocha. I need to find a way past Kurumu's charm or I'm screwed Naruto thought, beginning to space out again. He shook his head again and made a hand sign under his desk, focusing a small amount of chakra into a simple Gain Jutsu to fool his class, mainly Nekunam and Kurumu. The Gain Jutsu made it look as if Naruto was paying rapt attention to the teacher, while really he had whipped out Shikamaru's scroll and unraveled it over his desk, looking for the entry on Succubi. Let's see now the charm ability can only be used successfully on males, and only if the succubus has direct eye contact with the target. Additionally, this ability is not permanent and must be reapplied every few hours for those with average minds, though for those with particularly strong minds are able to weaken the ability and must have it reapplied more frequently depending on the mind. There are some cases in which the ability has been removed or staved off completely, though this is only capable for those with incredibly strong minds or split personality disorders. The latter has been shown to defeat the charm, as the second personality is able to overthrow the succubus's control. I see, that means it is, in a way, similar to Ino Shintenshin no Jutsu. And there is only one person I've known to defeat that. Sakura. Sakura's other self was able to kick Ino out of her mind in the Chunin exams, but how does that help me? I don't have another self. Unless you count Kaiufu, and there's no way I'm letting him out. Obviously you've forgotten about me, Naruto-kun. I can be your second mind. Ririn said from inside his mind. You can do that. Of course, I'm the great Kaiu I mean, the great XQB. She corrected herself, forgetting that that title was not hers anymore. Since I have some iota of Yaoki left, I can still merge it with yours to some degree. Simply flare your Yaoki when she takes over, and I'll merge with you temporarily and destroy her control. Okay in that case, thanks. Maybe later you can reward me with a different kind of merging. QB asked, sending Naruto some images through their mental link that were slightly inappropriate. Naruto quickly shut down the link and fought down his blush before releasing the Gain Jutsu, forgetting the scroll still on his desk. Everyone looked round at him as they noticed the scroll, to them, suddenly appearing on the wooden desk. Before any of them could read what it said, Naruto quickly snatched up the scroll and rolled it back up, placing it in a seal on his belt. He grinned nervously at his class as they looked at him with eyebrows raised. A magic trick. After class. So, you're a vampire, huh? That's one of the rumors. A voice said from above Mocha as she stood in the corridor, sipping from a can of tomato juice. She looked up to find Kurumu sitting on the banister above her. The blue-haired succubus jumped down from the banister to stand in front of her, several male students beginning to gather around the two. I came here to challenge you. A challenge? Mocha asked as the succubus got ever closer until Kurumu was standing behind her, looking out of the window. You're in the way of my plan. What plan? My plan to turn all of the boys here into my obedient love slaves. Kurumu shouted as she began to dance around, much to the delight of the audience. This is the succubus Korono Kurumu's master plan. Isn't it against school rules to reveal your true identity? But you, Akashi Yamoka, are making all the boys fall in love with you instead. Kurumu yelled angrily, completely ignoring what Mocha had said. My charm shouldn't have lost to you. Lightning began to appear between the two, signifying the coming battle, or at least if Kurumu had her way. 
So I've decided to steal Yuzumaki Naruto from you and defeat you completely. But this has nothing to do with Naruto. Why drag him into this? Mocha practically yelled at the succubus. She froze, however, when another voice sounded through the corridor. Ah, Mocha. I was looking for you. About earlier Naruto said as he walked towards her, Kuruma running straight past Mocha and straight into Naruto's chest. Naruto-kun. She cried as she buried her head in his chest. Naruto grabbed hold of her wrists and lifted her off of him. Sorry, but I came to speak to Mocha. Oh yeah? Charm she said as the familiar wave of Yaki spread out from her eyes and began to take over Naruto. He sensed himself losing control and closed his eyes, picturing a flame and darkness. He then began to fan that flame which grew and intensified. As this went on in his mind, a thin aura of red Yaki formed around his body, the mental exercise he was performing his own method for summoning demonic energy. Yes sir, I'll get right on it. Ririn said from inside him, connecting her Yaki with his. She found the link between Kurumu and Naruto somewhere near his chakra center and began to whittle away at it with her corrosive energy. You know, you smell really good, Naruto-kun Kurumu said as she pushed herself against him. Almost like a human. His blood must be tasty, that must be why you were having him for breakfast. No, that's not I'm not using him or anything, I just Mocha said, trying to defend herself. She was cut off, however, when Naruto decided to speak, still under Kurumu's control. I see so that's why she wanted to be my friend just like this morning come on, Riren. Hurry up. I don't think I can take all of this anymore. No, you're wrong. Mocha cried, close to tears. She turned and ran down the corridor, the tears she had been holding back streaming down her face. In the infirmary. Naruto sat, for some reason, in a chair beside one of the beds in the infirmary. Kurumu knelt on the bed next to him, doing a small victory dance. Yeah, I made her cry. Kurumu said in a sing-song voice. Mocha-sen's tearful face is just too priceless. I need to immunize myself to her ability somehow, or I'm gonna go insane. I can't go on saying such things to Mocha Naruto thought before standing up from his chair. Naruto-kun. Where are you going? I have to apologize to Mocha. Wait. Kurumu yelled as she jumped up at Naruto. She grabbed hold of his head and held it to her chest, suffocating him with her assets. You must be feeling depressed, Naruto-kun. But it's okay, cause I'll comfort you, she said, as Naruto slipped from consciousness. Mocha, on the other hand, was far from unconscious. Tears ran down her cheeks as she sat on a step outside the school. Do I really just want his blood? She said out loud, being that there was no one around. I don't even know what's what anymore. Is this the time to be depressed? A deeper, slightly muffled voice said from somewhere near her chest. Mocha looked down to see the gem on her rosary glowing, with a slitted eye in the center. Naruto is only enchanted by that succubus's lure. It's called charm, and he's merely being controlled by it. But the my rosary. Those who receive the succubus's kiss are subservient, and their energy will be stolen from them until they die. No way. Hurry. The rosary said before it stopped glowing, saying no more. Hurry. Where to? Mocha asked no one in particular. She looked around and stood up, breaking into a run as she headed for the main building. Naruto. Back in the infirmary, Naruto had found himself on his back on one of the beds, while Kurumu knelt over him, her arms and legs on either side of him, restricting his movement. Kurumu. He said as her face neared his, a large blush present on his face, but he was sure that was fake. Don't move. She said, her face getting ever closer to Naruto's. But. I'm also very nervous. Kurumu told him, making Naruto very worried about what she was going to do. You'll be the first I've tried this ability on. Kurumu activated her charm, making Naruto relax into the bed. She placed a hand on his cheek as she whispered to him. That's why don't run. Alright. She leant into him even further, their lips almost touching. Suddenly, Ririn managed to destroy the mental connection, and Naruto regained control. He grabbed hold of her and pulled her into a hug, her face moving straight past him. Not like that not so tightly. She cried as she struggled against his grip. Eventually she stopped squirming and hugged him back. Be gentle, alright. I'm sorry, Naruto said, making Kurumu's eyes widen. I just can't do it. But the one more charm. I said some really bad things to Mocha just now, and. Is that woman so great? Kurumu said as she struggled against him. I even did something like this. I did such embarrassing things just to get you. She shouted, pushing him off of her and onto his back, as she rose to her full and unimpressive height, a pair of leathery wings and a forked tail breaking out of her uniform. Enough. I'm angry now. The hell. The scroll didn't say anything about this. I'll destroy everything related to that woman. Stop. Mocha shouted as she ran into the room. Don't you dare lay a finger on Naruto. She yelled as she crashed into Kurumu's side, sending her flying out of the window. Go now, Naruto. What? No. I'm not gonna leave you to fight her. 
I'm not just a human anymore, I can help you. No Naruto. Her gaze can enslave the minds of men. She could use that against you if you were to fight her. Mocha told him before Kurumu's forked tail flew through the smashed window, wrapping itself around Naruto's neck. She pulled him through the window frame, Mocha grabbing onto his legs and flying into the sky with him. Damn it, you're too heavy. Kurumu shouted back as her tail's grip slipped from around Naruto's neck, dropping him to the ground. He landed in one of the trees, with Mocha on top of him. Mocha jumped down to the ground, as did Naruto. The blonde shinobi unsealed his gloves from his belt and slipped them on, channeling his chakra into the blades. The blades lengthened and sharpened, cutting through the air itself as he moved them around. He ran after Kurumu, his blades cutting through rocks, trees and graves as he ran. He eventually found Kurumu, floating above the ground with an evil smirk on her face, as extremely long claws protruded from her fingertips. You're the only one that can resist my charm, and Mocha is the only one that can make boys love her instead of me. Both of you are in the way of my plan, so I have to destroy you now. And what makes you think I'm just gonna stand here and let you hurt either of us? Naruto said, his head down as he clenched his clawed fists. He looked up, and Kurumu suddenly felt fear course through her body. Naruto's eyes had no trace of human in them, yet they were not the red slits that appeared when he used his yaki. They were blue as normal, but were like pieces of eyes. Just looking into could freeze even the warmest of hearts. An almost arctic wind swept through the area, making Kurumu shiver as she floated. Just what are you, huh? She said as her teeth began chattering. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, son of Nami Kazi Minato, the Yandai Mei Hokage, and Yuzumaki Kishina, a former QP host. I am the shinobi that defeated Akatsuki, Pain, Gara, and Orochimaru almost. I saved Kanahagakur no less than three times and became the strongest Gama Senin there is. But to you, right now I am death. He said, terrifying Kurumu completely and making the wind become even colder and stronger. The icy gale made the succubus's wings numb, and she dropped like a stone. A sickening crack sounded as she landed, and she cried out in pain as she clutched a leg. She looked up to glare at Naruto, but her eyes widened as she couldn't. Naruto was no longer there. But the how is this possible? How could I bebeton so easily? She shouted as she looked around frantically. She froze, even more so than she had already, when a voice completely devoid of emotion spoke from directly in front of her, while well, she couldn't see it. Because when you threaten those I consider precious, I just snap. The voice said, and another sickening crack was heard, and pain ran through her other leg. If you dare threaten Mocha again, I'll break your spine, got it? Kurumu nodded, and Naruto reappeared in a swirl of icy wind and lifted Kurumu bridal style, carrying her back in the direction of the school. Why are you helping me now? I though you hated me? She asked, not even bothering to struggle. Now what gave you that idea? I simply warned you what would happen if you threatened anyone I deemed precious. I think you could be a good friend if we got to know each other. Naruto said with a grin, the icy surroundings disappearing and replacing themselves with a gleaming sun sitting in the sun, shining brighter than normal, and warming Kurumu all the way down to her very soul. Just who is this guy? First he's angry, and everything gets cold, then he's happy, and it's all sunny can he control the weather or something she thought, as she looked up at the unassuming king of Makai. Damn it my test scores here are just as bad as the ones I had at the academy. Naruto thought as he looked at the board that showed the students' test scores. A few meters away, several others were talking about how low their own scores were. What is wrong with them? Besides, compared to Mocha, I'm completely useless. Naruto. A voice cried as the rosette ran towards him. How did you do? Well, I did ah, screw it. My score was completely hopeless. Well in that case, maybe next time we could study together? She asked, poking her fingers together in a very Hinata-like fashion. Uh, sure. I'd love to. Naruto replied, completely oblivious to the group of guys glaring at the back of his head so hard nobody would have been surprised if it burst into flames. But not even they were aware of the other person watching Naruto and Mocha's interaction from behind a pillar. Mocha san the small girl muttered as she hid behind the pillar. Not that the pillar did much to hide the witch hat on her head. So engrossed in watching the pink-haired vampire was she that she completely missed the three male students walking up behind her. Well done, Yukari. One of the three, one who seemed to be the leader, said, making the little witch jump a foot in the air before turning around. You guys again Yukari said, glaring at the three before her. As predicted, you're top of the class once again. As expected from the little genius. I guess skipping all those grades wasn't for nothing. But be careful, things'll be bad if you get too peepy. What do you mean? Well, for instance your clothing looks like some kind of cosplay. No matter how you look at it, it's against the rules, little girl. Another of them sad, getting far too close for comfort. To be honest, as class representative, your entire existence is a headache. The leader said, holding his head in a very overdramatic manner. 
The three laughed, while Yukari simply gave a small smirk and moved her hair-topped wand behind her back. With an almost unnoticeable flash of light, three metal pans dropped down on top of their heads, knocking them to the ground. Serves you right. Yukari said between giggles. The leader threw the pan off of him and ran at Yukari, claws sprouting from his fingertips. How dare you, you little brat. He roared as he reared his arm back. Before he could strike, however, Mocha appeared between them, holding her arms out to protect Yukari. Don't. She cried, while the guy in front of her stopped. Akashia. You should know better than to attack girls. Mocha cried as Naruto ran over to find out what was going on. Hey Mocha. Those are the guys from the second class, right? He asked, to which Mocha nodded. We'll leave her alone for now. Come on. The leader said to his two cronies, and turned away. You know, being in the same class as that pathetic half-breed is enough to make me puke. He said casually as he left, while Mocha breathed a sigh of relief. Damn them, it's guys like that who think they can ostracize someone, just because they're the slightest bit different that make me want to set fire to something. Naruto growled, a spark flickering in his hand as if to prove his point. They're just as bad as the people back home. At that, Mocha turned to him with a surprised look on her face, before her features softened and she placed a hand on his shoulder. Naruto visibly relaxed, while Yukari looked at him with narrowed eyes. Anyways, thanks for saving me, Dezu. Yukari cried, moving the attention from Naruto to her in an instant. I'm Sendo Yukari. Oh, I heard about you. You're one of our classmates, despite there being a four-year age difference. Mocha said to her, making the girl smile widen at the acknowledgement. That must mean you skipped ahead a couple of grades, huh? Naruto said, it being more of a statement than a question. You must be a real genius, Yukari-chan. Mocha said, making the girl blush. And I like your clothes too. Oh no, Mocha-san is much more beautiful. Other than that, actually I I love Mocha-san. Yukari cried, jumping directly onto Mocha while Naruto deadpanned. Okay, now I'm confused. He said in a flat tone, while Yukari had begun to grope Mocha. I love you even more when you pass by my classroom, and now, because you saved me, I've finally made up my mind. Made up your mind Mocha asked, looking down at the witch girl that was currently straddling her. Will you please go out with me, Mocha-san? Um about that I guess it's alright if it's as friends Mocha said, but then regretted it as the girl on top of her buried herself more into her chest. Yahoo. I'm so happy. Lesbian witches tell me, who saw that coming? Naruto said as he held a hand to his nose to stop the inevitable nosebleed. In the corridor. Everyone along the corridors looked onto the particularly odd sight that greeted them as they left their classrooms with blushes adorning their shocked faces. Mocha was simply walking down the hall, a blush on her face as well, with Yukari being dragged along behind by holding onto the pink-haired vampire's assets. Well, I guess it's not that weird when you consider how this is a school made by and for monsters, including all the odd things that happen on a daily basis. But it was not something you see every day, that was for sure. Wow, this feels so great. Mocha sans freests are amazing. Yukari said in her high pitched voice as she was dragged along by the object of her affections. They're even bigger than they look, too. Mocha sans freests being punished like this unforgivable. One male student shouted as he watched Yukari's ministrations. Mine are as flat as a board, but this is like a dream. Yukari said, squeezing Mocha's freests even more. Wait, 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 wait. What the hell do you think you're doing, Yukari? Naruto yelled as he appearing, running from around a corner. I see. You're finally here, Yuzumaki Naruto. Grades are terrible, athletic abilities are good, but not outstanding. Interest, minimum at best and special traits nothing except those weird whiskers of yours. You're as bad as the idiot males in a manga. Yukari said, not letting go of Mocha. Now look here, brat. There's no way I'm gonna let you talk to me like Naruto started, but was cut off by Yukari. I'm not gonna let my precious Mocha san be defiled by the likes of you, Yuzumaki. That's why I challenge you. She cried, before performing a dance involving her wand that only had place on some weird anime that made as little sense as possible. Before Naruto could ask what it was about, a cupboard opened and buckets, brooms and cleaning utensils of all kinds flew out, attacking Naruto. What the hell? Why does this always happen to me? Naruto shouted as he was poked and prodded by brooms, while buckets poured water on him that had seemed to appear out of thin air. Why, it's magic, dummy. Yukari said, holding her wand to her chest as she smiled mischievously. Magic? What do you mean, magic? I'm a witch. And from now on, those who come near Mocha San will be disposed of by my magic. Mocha and Naruto sweat dropped slightly having already realized this. What they didn't realize, however, was the three guys from earlier lurking around the very same corner Naruto had appeared from. There's no denying that, we heard it with our own ears. One said to the other two, who nodded. It's against the school rules to reveal your true identity, one as smart as she should know that. Another said. 
The leader, who was leaning against the wall being over dramatic again, opened his eyes and looked to the side. You're getting in way over your head, brat. In the infirmary. Naruto was sitting on the bed of the infirmary once again, this time with Kurumu holding a cotton swab to a cut on his cheek. Apparently, being that the former QB no longer had the Yaki to heal his injuries, he had to do it himself. He literally had to push the Yaki to the injuries in order to heal them, something he just didn't have the concentration to do in battle. Oh oh oh. Who knew 11 year olds could hurt so much? Where does it hurt, Naruto-kun? Kurumu said, taking away the cotton swab for a moment. Currently, everywhere. And thanks to that little brat, I can't get anywhere near Mocha without being beaten to within an inch of my life. Naruto told her. Little did he know, however, that because of this Achibi Kurumu was dancing around in the real one's mind. Yahoo. Thanks to that little kid, Mocha's out of the picture, and I can spend some alone time with Naruto-kun. Nice going, Sendo Yukari. Kurumu thought as she stood up and walked around the bed, before getting back onto it on her hands and knees. I've heard rumors about her she said as she crawled towards Naruto. Oh, really? Like wah ha ha, what are you doing? They say she's a genius, but still just a selfish little kid who gets teased by her classmates. She probably acts like that because she thinks she's a genius. Kurumu said to the blonde boy sitting before her who was quickly finding himself closer and closer to the city of the pillow. Outside of the window, watching the particularly entertaining interaction, was Yukari. But this guy I have to beat him quickly and thoroughly. He's my love rival, and it's my duty to Mokasan. And so, I will use this voodoo doll to defeat him. The girl pulled out a piece of hair she had recovered from her last encounter with Naruto and pushed it inside the doll, before bending its arm and making it punch itself. Inside, Naruto did the same, slugging himself across the cheek before falling back onto the pillow. Naruto-kun. Kurumu cried, before getting closer to him to check if he was alright. Meanwhile, Yukari was making the doll hit itself even more, while Naruto replicated all of its movements. You won't be playing with Mokusen anytime soon, but you can play with a big freested girl instead. Yukari thought, a mischievous murk on her face before waving the doll's arms around. This was probably not the best time for Mocha to walk in. Nevertheless, she did. When she entered the room she was treated to the sight of Naruto straddling Kurumu this time, his hands on her chest. Kurumu was blushing and giggling, obviously enjoying his ministrations. Seeing this, Mocha's mind simply shut down. No emotion appeared on her face for a few moments, she made no sound and no movement. Uh, Mocha. This isn't what it looks like Naruto said, breaking Mocha out of her stupor. What the hell are you two doing? Kuruma must have used charm, right? Of course not. It wouldn't do any good anyway, it doesn't work on him. Kuruma yelled at her pink-haired rival. Then why? Mocha asked, but then something even worse happened. Yukari, still unnoticed, moved the doll's arms again as Naruto tried to get up. He tripped and caught Kurumu's underwear in the process. He took them with him as he fell, and a breeze passed through the room, despite the windows and doors being shut. Unfortunately, Naruto chose that moment to look up. Blood began to pour from his nose as Kurumu jumped away from him, holding her skirt down. Sheesh, Naruto-kun. You could have asked. There too Omoka said in an incredibly creepy sing-song voice, one of her fangs appearing at the edge of her mouth. The shinobi in question tried to run away at that moment, but tripped over the bed in his panic. Aha, I got you. A shrill but muffled voice said from across the room. Looking in that direction, the three saw Yukari holding the voodoo doll. I knew that brat was behind this. Let me kill her. Naruto said as he jumped towards the window. Mocha grabbed hold of him and held him back with her immense strength. In an empty classroom. Mocha, do something about her. Naruto said, furious at the little witch. You know, I really don't mind though. Kurumu said with a blush on her face. Not the point. She's only young, Naruto. Mocha reasoned, but was silenced when she saw the look on his face. I really don't give a damn. It doesn't matter whether she's eleven or a hundred and eleven. It's common sense, for Kami's sake. Even so Mocha said, looking back at the young girl standing behind her. Look here, Yukari. If you keep doing things like that, you're gonna be hated and alone. Naruto said angrily, now directing his anger at the girl herself. So what? I'm a genius, and I neither want nor need friends who are of a lower intelligence. It doesn't matter anyway, I was alone from the start. Yukari said, making Naruto stop. Before he could speak, however, several pans dropped from the sky on top of him, knocking him to the ground again. Filled you twice. She said in a sing-song voice, before running out of the room, with Naruto hot on her heels. Damn you, you little brat. I'll make you wish you were dead a thousand times over before I finish the job, you hear me? Naruto yelled as he ran after her, weaving between other students. Naruto, stop. Getting mad at a little kid is a little overboard, don't you think? Mocha cried as she followed after him. Not at all. 
It gives me all the more reason to, being that her parents should have taught her otherwise. Naruto shouted back, before stopping. Damn, I lost her. Yukari, meanwhile, was running outside of the school by the stream where Naruto had found Kurumu. Being that she hadn't exactly been looking where she was running, so it was only a matter of time before she ran into someone. Hey, that hurt, idiot. Watch where you're walking. HMPH. Compared to you, I guess we could be considered idiots. The person she had crashed into said, making Yukari look up at him. Class president. She said, looking up at him. His cronies walked up behind him, with creepy grins on their faces. This is the brat that's been breaking all the rules, right? One said. The president sure is angry, huh? The other replied. That has nothing to do with you. Yukari cried, waving her arms about in the sky. She stopped, however, when the class president's hand closed around her wrist, lifting her into the air. Oh, it does. You see, we have to punish those who break the rules. Back in the classroom. You're too nice to that kid, Mocha. Naruto said to his pink-haired friend. But when I think about how she's feeling. Their feelings. What about my feelings? I'm the one who got beat. I thought maybe you I just can't leave her alone. Mocha yelled before running out of the room. As expected. Witches aren't affected by hate. Kurumu said, her arms crossed over her ample chest. What do you mean? Don't you know? Witches were originally half-monster, half-human. But now they're just called half-breeds and are hated by monsters and humans alike. That girl's probably really lonely. This slightly surprised Naruto. She's like me. But why are you worrying about her and Mocha? Don't you still have me? Kurumu asked, jumping at Naruto with her arms open. Naruto moved, though, and Kurumu ended up crashing into a desk. Wah, wait up. Back in the forest, Yukari was being harassed by the class president and his cronies. They threw against a tree, a loud thud sounding as her back connected with it. What the hell do you think you're doing? She cried, making the class president's frown even deeper. What we should have done a long time ago. We're gonna take care of you, you little piece of filth. He roared, before something incredibly disturbing happened. Their mouths shot away from their faces into scaled snouts. Thick tails erupted from the back of their trousers, and claws protruded from their fingertips. Their eyes became yellow and slitted as scales covered their bodies, turning them into lizard-like creatures. Our class doesn't need a filthy little brat like you. He said, most of it coming out as a hiss. At that moment, Yukari had a flashback of earlier in the year, when three girls insulted her behind her back. But we don't really need to see that, do we? We'll just skip it. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue, kid. You were pretty talkative a minute ago. The class president said with a chuckle. Yukari jumped up from her place on the ground and tried to perform magic, but before she could finish her spell, the lizard's jaws clamped down on her wand, shattering it. Peh, disgusting. What should we do to her, boss? I think we should eat her. With all this mist, no one would notice. Yeah that's what we'll do. The leader said, licking his lips as he looked the girl up and down. Sure, there's not much meat on her, but it'll be a change in taste. The three neared the girl, grinning creepily, but were stopped by another voice sounding throughout the clearing. Get away from her. They turned to find Mocha walking towards them, her eyes narrowed and her fists balled up into fists. Akashi you insist on bothering us yet again. We should eat her too, boss. One said, licking his lips. Yeah, she looks real tasty the other muttered, looking Mocha up and down as he grinned lecherously. Just run, Mocha-san. Don't worry about me. Yukari cried, but everyone froze when another voice came through the mist. I agree. You should run, Mocha. As should you, Yukari. You wouldn't want to get caught in the crossfire. The voice said in a cold, emotionless tone. The five people in the clearing looked around, searching for the source of the voice, but there was no one there. Confused. Frustrated. Frightened. You should be. Come out, you coward. If you can't face me like a man, you're not strong enough to beat me. The class president shouted into the mist. But I am facing you, Tokage. I'm right in front of you. The voice said, while the lizardman's eyes widened. He swiped out in front of him with a clawed hand, but hit nothing. Too slow, Tokage. You'll need to be faster to beat a shinobi. It came from behind him this time, and the lizardman cut through the air with his tail, hitting nothing once again. Where are you, coward? Come out here, or I'm gonna eat these two right here and now. The lizard shouted, then froze as the temperature dropped several degrees, then rose considerably. Those were the wrong words, Tokage. I was gonna let you off, but take the girls with me. But now, nothing with scales is leaving here unscathed. A stream of flame shot out of the fog at one of the lizards, burning him badly. The lizard jumped back, straight into one of the other monsters, knocking both of them over. The leader shook his head in annoyance and turned to Yukari. This guy seems to have some reason he wants to protect you, brat. So the perfect way to stop him would be to kill you. 
He roared as he sent a clawed hand at the girl, but stopped as another hand grabbed hold of his arm. I told you, Tokage. You hurt her, I'm taking this arm off. The voice said, and its grip on the arm tightened. The sound of bones cracking echoed through the mist, making Mocha and Yukari flinch with every crack. Who are you, idiot? The class president roared, trying to release his arm. Dust a dead last, bottom of the class dope. But I'm the dead last, bottom of the class dope. The mysterious voice said, before releasing the lizard's arm. Before he could pull the limb away, however, the owner of the voice tapped his arm with his index and middle fingers, making the arm fall limp and lifeless. What did you do? Daiwakin. Style of the noble Hyuga. The voice said before the mist began to clear, revealing Naruto with burning red eyes and red chakra surrounding his hands. But this one is different in that it uses Yaki. And my Yaki just happens to be poisonous. Either you get it taken out or you die, Tokage. Am you, Blondie? The lizardman yelled before swiping at him with the other claw, but was stopped as Naruto began to spin in one place. Red Yaki surrounded him in a sphere, knocking back everything within range of it. Onihaki. Aka Katen. Demon 8 Trigrams. Red Rotation. Naruto cried as he spun, the Yaki both burning the lizard and sending him into a tree. Naruto stood up straight as the spin stopped and the red in his eyes disappeared, leaving his normal ice blue. I wouldn't bother using anything stronger on someone as weak as you. He said as he glared at the lizardman, before turning to Yukari. Are you okay? I'm fine but my back hurts a bit from when they threw me over here. Alright. Naruto said before crouching down. Yukari understood what the gesture meant and climbed onto his back, wrapping her arms around his neck. Once she was secure, Naruto walked over to Mocha, who had been knocked down by the force of the Katen. He held out a hand which Mocha took, standing back up. It was soon after that Mocha fell against Naruto, her legs not being able to take her weight. Naruto let go of Yukari for a moment, letting her dangle from his back temporarily as he put his hands in a cross hate seal. Another Naruto appeared beside him and picked up Mocha bridal style, both Naruto's and the girls walking back into the school, leaving the three lizardmen lying in the clearing unconscious. A few days later. You know, Yukari is behaving better now. Kurumu told Mocha as they walked down the corridor. She's apologized to her class, and everyone's been thinking about how they treated her. They're getting along now gradually. That's good, at least she's not alone anymore. Mocha replied as they entered the empty classroom where they usually meet Naruto. What they saw inside surprised them to no end. I love you, Naruto-kun. Yukari cried as she wrapped her tiny arms around Naruto's waist. Yukari-chan, what are you doing? Mocha asked, looking wide-eyed at the spectacle before her. Oh, Mocha-chan. My class is right beside here, so can I play here too? Uh never mind that, what are you doing to Naruto? Well, I may love Mocha-chan, but I've fallen in love with Naruto-kun too. Yukari told the two girls, before starting a long-winded explanation of why she's in love with Naruto, while Kurumu and Mocha's blushes grew with every passing second. Anyway, I hope Naruto-kun will push me down again real soon. Great, bisexual witches. Even better than lesbian witches. Naruto thought as he struggled against her surprisingly strong grip. No way, brat. Naruto-kun is mine. Kurumu yelled as she grabbed hold of Naruto's left arm and began pulling on it. Yukari grabbed the other arm and began pulling on that one, turning the altercation into an Uzumaki Naruto tug of war. No, mine. Yukari cried as both girls pulled on their respective arms before Mocha spoke out. You can't, Yukari. She said, making both girls stop and look at her in confusion. Naruto is mine. She shouted as she jumped at him, wrapping her arms around his neck as she bit down on his neck. Kapuchu. Not again. You didn't save me any. Naruto looked up, his own scarlet-tinted eyes meeting the slitted crimson gaze of the woman before him, her slender arms crossed under her ample bosom and long, silver hair billowing about her in the wind. He smirked darkly, baring his elongated canines, like fangs, the coppery sheen of blood glinting on their surface in the unholy glow of the sun, its light also a horrid red. She sauntered over to him and bent over his seated form, lifting his head with a single finger under his chin. She lowered her own mouth to his cheek, and a soft pink tongue darted out between her full, red lips to lap up the light spattering of blood that had sprayed onto his face. Despite himself, the blonde blushed lightly, yet didn't pull back. The only thing that ruined this moment for him was the horrible snorting sounds that emanated from the roiling mass of fur and muscle on the ground beside him. Damn it, Jin. Take that somewhere else, will ya? You're making me sick. The werewolf raised its bloodied maw with a toothy grin, its wide, spade-like tongue snatching up the gore dripping from its long muzzle, as its blackened claws, glinting with a sheen of lifeblood, tore open its victim's ribsage like paper. You eat too fast you're gonna puke, and I don't wanna be around when that happens. You got a problem with the way I eat, don't invite me next time, the best Yaokai growled deeply, its gruff voice shaking the very earth beneath their feet. 
The wolfish hybrid stooped for a second. On second thoughts, screw that. I'll take it somewhere else. It speared the mauled corpse with its claws, each an obsidian knife with an edge as sharp as a razor, and dragged it off into the distance, trailing a bloody smear in the grass behind him as he left the demon and vampire alone. I just don't get him Naruto admitted, shaking his head as he stared at the werewolf's retreating back until a slight hand gripped his chin and pulled his attention back to the silver-haired girl that was slowly drawing closer. Her pale eyes eased apart under her short plaid skirt as she climbed atop him, straddling his own legs as she sensually inched her own face closer to his, his bright scarlet eyes widening in surprise as her head dipped lower at the last minute, her bountiful freests pressing against his own chest as her lips latched onto the cartilage of his neck. Her needle-like fangs lightly pricking the tanned skin they found there and lapped up a sweet, free-flowing crimson that oozed from the tiny wound with a look of blissful content. Naruto's eyes opened to the whitewashed ceiling of his dormitory, the sun, golden, not red, streaming through his window in great golden bars. The birds that nested on the large, if dead, tree that stood ominously outside his window were chirping happily until a loud squawk permeated the air, followed by a rush of air and a deep guttural gulp. There was nothing out of place as far as he could see from his place of resting, only the soft twinge of someone's fangs inside the flesh of his neck, gently sucking on the sweet scarlet nectar that flowed forth. He shot up abruptly, the freeing feeling of a sizable weight rolling off of him rushing through his muscles, though his eyes widened in terror. It was only a dream, right? Naruto-kun his eyes slowly slid to the side, and he breathed a quiet sigh of relief as they met the worried emerald stare of his vampire classmate, her curvaceous form shimmering mystically in the sunlight as she pressed herself into his side. She raised a finger and dabbed at the small spot of blood that still oozed from the wound on his neck even after she'd finished her meal. Is everything alright? Yeah, Mocha-chan everything's fine, Naruto answered with a sigh, a calloused hand rising to massage the back of his neck. Then, his body tensed, and Mocha could feel each and every hair standing on end. Wait, no. Everything's not alright. What are you doing in my bed and dressed like tha ha ha? He had to clench his nose forcefully to stop the impendent nosebleed when his gaze traveled down her body and noticed something he really should have noticed earlier. Mocha's buxom form was covered only by the insubstantial fabric of a silk and lace nighty that highlighted every dip and curve of her lithe musculature, and even now he could feel the soft flesh of her freests pressing themselves into his side as she embraced him tightly. You were yelling and roaring in your sleep one of the others on this floor called me to come here to try and calm you down, but you just kept on screaming. And I had a bad dream, too. She nuzzled her face into the crook of his neck as if embarrassed by this news. His arm circled her instinctively, but he quickly realized what he was doing and leapt from the bed. Mocha whined softly at the loss of heat and rose from the thin covers, stretching languidly as Naruto turned away with a pale pink blush, grabbing his pants and shirt and stepping into the bathroom to change into his uniform away from Mocha's inquisitive gaze. He'd just finished looping his belt round his waist when a knock sounded at the door and the hairs on the back of his neck bristled. I'll get it. He relaxed for a moment before his mind caught up with the information and he bolted from the bathroom just in time to see Mocha open the door with a small, adorable yawn to the dark jealous glare of a certain succubus. Oh, good morning Karumu. What are you doing here Karumu asked slowly, the murderous look on her face growing ever more violent as she took in more of Mocha's attire or lack thereof. Mocha smiled nervously and scratched the back of her head in a manner very reminiscent of both our and her favorite blonde, just as the semi-dressed shinobi himself skidded into the small vision of his dorm that Kurumu had through the doorway. What exactly is going on, Naruto-kun? Ah well, you see, Mocha-chan just stopped by for breakfast. Yeah. Naruto did his own signature smile and scratch as he chuckled nervously. It was plain to see from Kurumu's dangerously narrowed eyes that she wasn't buying his explanation for one second. Something wrong, Kurumu-chan. It's just if she was only stopping by for breakfast, why is she only wearing her underwear? Naruto and Mocha both froze with light blushes on their cheeks, even as Kurumu's glare burned furiously. Mocha sighed in defeat and rested a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Sorry, but you're terrible at lying. Naruto-kun had a nightmare, so I came over. Kurumu's face softened and she looked up at Naruto's taller form with a mixed look of worry and neglect that caused Naruto's heart to wrench within his chest. You had a nightmare? Naruto nodded slowly, resisting the urge to hug her tightly as tears which he could tell were all too fake, welled up in her deep purple orbs. Th then, why didn't you call me? I I'd do anything for you, Naruto-kun. Garumu, sobbing uncontrollably, threw herself at the blonde, arms outspread, as she attempted to tackle her destined one, only to stop in midair, a pale blue aura surrounding her frozen form. A high, mocking laugh pervaded the uncomfortable silence as the fourth member of their group swept into the room, wielding her hair-topped wand in Karumu's general direction. Yukari. Good morning Kurumu. Having fun, Dezuka. 
The blue-haired succubus glared at the young witch, whose gaze had since moved from her rival, and settled on her beloveds with a bright red blush, as her bright pink eyes took in their states of undress. M. Mokachan and Naruto Kunyu. The preteen's innocent mind, overloaded with the images her imagination provided her, went into a state of shutdown as the young boarder being slumped limply to the floor, her face a bright scarlet. Now look what you did. You broke her, Kurumu stated in complete deadpan as the spell that immobilized her wore off, and she dropped unceremoniously to the ground. Naruto forcefully pushed all three girls from the room to finish readying himself for the school day, unaware of the pair of dark grey eyes that watched him. He pulled his white shirt on over his muscular torso, wrapped the crimson tie around his neck and slid his arms into his green blazer, hiding his bladed gloves in a pair of storage seals on the sleeves lining. A hand shot to his backpack and slung it over his shoulder, but jerked into the air again to catch a shuriken, spinning furiously, out of the air on his fingertip. The dark-garbed figure dropped down from nowhere, brandishing a tanto from the sheath on its back, leaping toward the blonde with a vicious downward swipe. Naruto's fingers closed around its thin wrist and twisted the fragile joint with a horrible crack, wrenching the blade free from the assailant's grip and allowing it to clatter uselessly to the floor. Who the hell are you? Naruto asked, leveling a blazing glare on the dark figure, who pulled his arm free from Naruto's powerful grip and leapt backwards, letting loose a volley of kunai toward the blonde, who ducked under them, snatched up the discarded tanto, and bringing it to the assassin's throat in one quick fluid motion. The masked figure glanced down at the blade to his neck and laughed nervously. Your skills haven't dulled any, Naruto-kun, the mysterious assailant observed with a friendly tone, slowly raising a hand, an action which Naruto's eyes followed warily, to his white porcelain mask, and pulling it from his face. A small polite smile tugged at the unnaturally pale skin, framed by messy jet black hair. His dull gray eyes watched with amusement as Naruto's own widened in surprise, slowly retracting the blade from his throat. The hell. What are you doing here? You don't sound too pleased to see me. Did I do something wrong? You're not supposed to be here. On the contrary, Hokage-sama sent me with a mission. Naruto's abro rose inquisitively as the reared Anbu's arm delved into the depths of his backpack and returned quickly with a manila folder, the kind he'd seen many times before, as almost all official documents were stored in such. His fingers worked with the seal that bound the folder, though his eyes never left the pale-faced shinobi before him, even as he pulled a thick wad of paper free from the folder and skimmed its contents. The guard mission. Tsunade Bachin knows I'm busy with schoolwork, surely. I don't have time to run back and forth between campus and the shinobi nations, just to look after some who is this girl, anyway. Hisakawa Manami, a Kinoichi from Takigakur no Sato. She's the younger sister of Hisakawa Fu, the previous Jinchuriki of the Nanabi. Naruto froze. She's also the new Jinchuriki of the Nanabi. Explain. I thought that the Nanabi already got sealed into Pain's statue thing. Pain was the one who summoned the Jito Meizo, so when you defeated Pain the statue vanished, unsealing the already captured Bijuu in the process. As a result, seven furious-tailed beasts were let loose in the middle of a Megakur. Suffice to say, aim is no more. Most of them have been resealed, though the Ichibi, Sanbi and Yanbi are still missing. Akatsuki is still after the Jinchuriki, however, so Taki's leader thought it would be best if an untrained Jinchuriki such as Hisakawa Sen was sent somewhere safe, where someone could protect her. Who better than one of the most experienced and most powerful Jinchuriki in the five great nations? I'm flattered, but I'm not babysitting a bunch of kids with demonic power. How many are there? Just this one. Do remember that the tailed beasts can only be sealed into one whose chakra coils haven't yet developed, hence why they are mainly sealed into infants. Hisakawa San is an exception, partially because before this she was a normal civilian without access to chakra, and partially because of her close relationship with her sister. She's become used to the Nanabi's chakra, and her body can easily adapt to the demonic energy. I've arranged for her to meet with you later today. Naruto sighed in defeat. You owe me for this one, Sai. Naruto slid into his seat as he entered his homeroom, dropping his backpack to the floor and groaned, hiding his face in his hands. As if he didn't have enough to deal with to begin with. The various monsters that seemed to be drawn to him, the rivalry between Mocha, Kurumu and Yukari, his own natural misfortune, and now this. Oaheo, oh, Naruto-kun. His face rose slightly from his palms to meet the nervous gaze of the vampire Crisette herself, standing before him. I'm sorry about this morning. I didn't mean to cause so much trouble. No worries. I get what you were trying to do, so thank you, Naruto replied, causing the unassuming S-class Yaokai to beam brightly, rocking slightly on her heels. It's just ugh doesn't matter. For an instant, his eye line traveled over Mocha's shoulder and alighted on a familiar smile, as a small gaggle of his classmates bundled into the room, bringing with them one of the sources of his displeasure. Sigh, he muttered under his breath and rose from his seat quickly, almost knocking the chair over in the process. 
Sorry, Mocha, I'll talk to you later. He didn't wait for a response. He didn't remember crossing the classroom, but he certainly did as his hand closed roughly on a fistful of Sai's own green blazer, just where had he gotten that from? And pulled him away from the group of guffrowing males, wrenching the door open and dragging the rude Anbu from the room without another word. My, so forceful, Sai remarked as Naruto shoved him into an empty classroom. The desks were pushed against the wall, leaving a wide open space in the room center, lit only by the sunlight that streamed through the wide windows. I thought you swung this way, but I didn't know you liked it quite so rough. One more word and I will cave in your skull. Sai fell silent, and his smile vanished. This was obviously not a time for jokes, if the look on Naruto's face told him anything. Appearing in my room, attacking me, then giving me work when my license is supposed to be suspended is bad enough, Sai. But joining the school. Are you crazy? This is my mission as well, and I intend to see that it's completed. Wouldn't you? This isn't a normal mission anymore, Sai. It stopped being normal the moment you stepped into this school. Naruto ran a hand through his hair, sighing tiredly. This is far from an average high school, that's for damn sure. I'm telling you, go back to Konoha and leave this to me. It's for your own good, man. It's nice to know you're worried about me, but I assure you. I can handle whatever this school can throw at me. A knock sounded at the door, and Mocha stepped into the room, suddenly shy. Um this girl said she needs to speak with you, Naruto-kun. Mocha stepped out of the doorway and allowed her companion to stride into the light, hands on hips. Naruto's eyes automatically traveled up her body from the floor, slowing on every luscious curve in her dark skin, scantily covered by the white button shirt that showed off a large amount of her sizable cleavage, and the plaid skirt that fell even shorter than that of Mocha or Kurumu. Her body itself was small, though proportioned perfectly, and she looked up at the taller senior with large glittering amber eyes that contrasted with the mint green hair that fell to her shoulders. Over one shoulder she'd slung a black messenger bag decorated with ladybirds, and over the other a red hockey bag. Isakawa Manami, the girl introduced herself, offering a hand which Naruto took in a firm handshake. She looked to Sai and her head rose a little as she recognized him, stepping closer to the red Anbu. So, where's Yuzumaki Dono? I'm really excited to meet him. Naruto bit back a small laugh. She hadn't recognized him one bit. Sai himself allowed a small smile, thought Mocha only looked confused. Though he's around, Sai told her mysteriously, trying not to laugh despite his usual nihilistic nature. In fact, I think you two have already met. Manami's eyes widened as they darted back to Naruto, who smiled and gave a small wave. It was rather amusing to see the blush slowly rise up her face in the same manner he'd seen with Hinata so many times in the past. He felt his heartache as he remembered their tearful farewell. He hadn't had much of a chance to write to his friends back home, and he had promised he'd return as soon as possible. He quickly shook himself free of his memories and returned to the world. Manami was still stood before him, not uttering a single comprehensible word, but she had changed. Bon was the confident, prideful Hisakawa Manami that had entered the room with a long stride, parading about with hands on hips like she owned the entire room along with everything and everyone in it. In her place stood a shy, bashful Hisakawa Manami, a dark pink blush staining her chocolate cheeks as she tried to curl in on herself even while standing. Oh oh, Yuzumaki Dono. I am so sorry for not recognizing you immediately. She bowed low, her amber eyes wide and face a bright red. It was hard for Naruto to keep a straight face. The H that's okay, Minami-san. It's not like I'm famous or something. She rose very quickly and looked at him, confused. Sai decided at this moment to speak up. Not entirely true. You've become a celebrity in the shinobi nations, what with your defeat of pain and most of Akatsuki single-handedly. And among the Jinchuriki your name is renowned even further as the only one who has been able to absorb and successfully control the terrible Yaki of Abiju and the QB no Yako at that. I'll admit, it is quite impressive. I it's not that special Naruto muttered under his breath, itching his cheek with a small blush like he'd seen Aruka do many times when he was embarrassed. Anyways, Minami-san. We'll be guarding you from today onward, so I hope we can be good friends. The girl nodded slowly, and her blush deepened as she hid her face, mumbling something incoherently. What was that? I can't hear you. I, I said can you train me? So, who's the new girl? Kurumu asked, pointing her fork at the blushing verdette who sat next to Naruto, with Mocha sat on the other side. Needless to say, she wasn't too happy about this situation. Why should this shy little hussy get priority seats next to her destined one? Mocha she could just about live with, but only just. Besides, it was fun messing with the vampire, and their rivalry was interesting at times. Instead, she got to sit next to the blonde, while Kurumu was dumped next to the bratty witch, and this pale-faced weirdo, who reminded her far too much of a wet fish. This is Hisakawa Manami, a girl I've gotta look after for a while. No big deal, right? She's just gonna eat lunch with us. Naruto gestured toward the succubus. 
This is Korono Kurumu, to the little witch beside her, Sendo Yukari, and you've already met with Akashi Yamoka and Sai. Sai the female Jinchuriki asked. That's right, Naruto thought. Sai never actually had a last name, did he? Does Sai, the root answered with a polite smile. Why do you have to look after her, Naruto-kun? Yukari piped up, her tiny hands clutching her wand beneath the table. She, like Kurumu, instantly disliked the girl, and how much she gazed lovingly at least, that's how Yukari saw it at her Naruto-kun. There was far too much of a chance that she would be roped into his steadily growing harem of women, and she had enough trouble dealing with the far too desperate advances of cow tits, as she called the succubus she'd begrudgingly taken a seat next to when there was no seat between Naruto and Mocha available. Naruto put a finger to his temple and thought. How best to put this, he wondered. She's a friend of the family from back home. Her folks worry about her a lot, so they ask me to keep an eye on her while she's here, he explained, which seemed to satisfy the border being, if her tiny nod was any indication. He looked to his left and saw that Minami was still considerably confused, an issue he intended to resolve when the others were out of earshot. They ah, Yuzumaki don't know. If I may ask, wh what exactly will Yao be teaching me? She asked, and suddenly the group was interested. Teach her? Yukari asked, stars in her eyes. Are you gonna train her in using some of your super awesome techniques, like you used last time? Sai raised an eyebrow, which Naruto waved off. Minami, on the other hand, looked positively terrified. She'd heard of the great Uzumaki Naruto and his signature Rasengan, and its derivative, the Fuitan. Rasen Shuriken. Both were incredibly destructive ninjutsu that took immense stores of chakra and near-perfect chakra control. She had only recently become a Kinoichi and a Jinchuriki, so she had neither the control nor the control over her Bijuu's chakra that Naruto had from 17 years' as practice. Not to mention the severe drawbacks of the S-rank original ninjutsu. The loss of all chakra in her right hand would be horrifying, even with the healing factor that Anabi's Yaki granted her. No, nothing too taxing. Most of those were just experiments, anyway. We'll start with some basic techniques and work up from there, especially since your powers have only just awakened, he said with a knowing wink. Naruto, though he didn't much show it, was excited. The last person he'd really trained was Konohimaru, if you could call that training. And here was someone who really wanted to train under him properly, rather than just wanting to know how to turn into a naked woman to defeat his perverted grandfather. Lunch couldn't have passed more slowly for him, who eagerly desired to leave the confines of the school building and get out into the forest to show Manami some of the less draining ninjutsu he'd picked up. So, first things first. Do you know your chakra affinities? Manami shook her head in the negative. No matter, I just happened to have some chakra paper with me. He pulled out a slip of paper and handed it to her. She examined it, confused. Um how do I use it? You just gotta pump your chakra through your hand and into the paper, like if you were using a jutsu. The paper will do one of five things depending on your chakra affinity. If you have fire, it'll smolder. If you have water, it'll become damp. If you have earth it'll crumple into dust. If you have lightning, it'll crumple up, and if you have wind, it'll cut itself in half. The severity of these effects generally denote your power in that chakra type. So, if you had a water affinity, but it was a strong water affinity, rather than just get a little damp the paper would be literally soaked. Do you get it now? I, I think so Naruto nodded and pulled out another slip of paper. Just to make sure, I'll show you a quick demonstration. He held his own paper between his index and middle fingers and closed his eyes. He knew what would happen when the chakra he was forcing through his system reached his fingertips. He'd had two in order to create the Rasen Shuriken. He was a Fuitan specialist, just like Saratobi Asuma had been before his death. So why did his hand feel so warm? Why is that supposed to happen? He heard Minami ask in a worried tone, and his brow furrowed as his eyes slowly creaked open. What was there to be worried about? But though the flames didn't hurt him. In fact, they barely tickled whenever one of the tongues of heat embodied licked at his calloused palm. Rather than fall into two equal pieces as the paper had done last time, the entire thing, paper, hand and all, had burst into scarlet fire flecked with orange, raging even as he brought the flame closer to his face to inspect it. Sure enough, within the blaze's white hot core, the paper had split in two as it should have done, but what was with this fire? And what was more, it just didn't seem to stop even when he forcefully shut down the flow of his chakra. He threw the burning paper away, where it collided with one of the dead, grey trees that made up most of Yaokai Academy's gloomy grounds, and the tree immediately exploded, flinging broken pieces of dead wood at the two, even as Naruto moved in front of his student and shielded her from the blast. You okay, Minami-san? Naruto choked out as chips of grey slowly wormed their way from his skin, the tan flesh knitting itself back together almost instantly. He may have had an incredible healing factor, but that didn't stop it from hurting like an absolute bitch. Iwamanami stuttered bashfully. 
Naruto, being as dense as he is, hadn't noticed, but when he shielded Manami, he turned his back on the blast and hugged her small form to his chest, protecting her with his larger frame. She could feel his toned chest pressed against her own, her frees pressing through the thin fabric of her school shirt and squishing against him. His thick muscular arms wrapped around her lithe body, pulling her closer as her blush rapidly deepened through pale pink to a deep maroon as the blood rushed to her cheeks. Naruto's arm slowly retreated, denying her the warmth that, despite her considerable embarrassment, she'd quickly begun to enjoy, and she involuntarily let out a soft whimper as Naruto pulled away from and rose to his full height. If Naruto had heard the fragile whine, he certainly didn't show it. Well, that was definitely interesting. He pulled a wad of chakra papers from his pocket and examined them. How huh, these are definitely chakra papers. For a second there I thought I'd got them mixed up with an explosive tag. He looked down at the blushing Jinchuriki, still clutching her chakra paper tightly, as if it were her last lifeline. Why don't you give yours a try? Wanami looked up at the blonde, who smiled and nodded. That surely wouldn't happen to her, would it? It was most likely the QB's chakra that had filtered into his own stream by mistake. Even if that did happen to her, Chame was far more mellow than her older sister, and her chakra followed suit. If a shred of the Bijuu's chakra was to contaminate her own supply, then the effect it had on this chakra test would never be as explosive as Naruto's had been. Oh okay, she stuttered and closed her own amber eyes. She felt the cool chakra flow through her system like a mountain spring until finally it reached her fingertips and burst out in a small wave of chakra that dissipated before Naruto had even realized it was there. She heard Naruto whistle in admiration and she slowly creaked open her eyes, almost afraid of the result. What if nothing had happened? What if she had no affinity for any type of chakra? Would she be considered a failure? Looks like you've got two affinities, impressive. Most people don't get a second chakra type that they can use easily until Chunin or Jounin level. That could be down to the Nanabi, though still, it's good nonetheless. It gives you a broader scope of jutsu to work with. Wanami looked in wonder at the wet shreds of paper that slowly fluttered to the ground, having crumbled between her fingers, even as a clear sheen of water appeared on its rapidly dissolving surface. It had crumpled to dust, which meant earth, the basis of Doten the Jutsu. But it had also turned damp, which meant water or suetin. Two affinities. She didn't care if one was a result of Chame, it still filled her with pride, at least until she looked up at Naruto's smiling face, and the feeling of invincibility faded into a deep-seated embarrassment. She barely noticed when a small scroll wrapped in blue found its way into his hands. You should try out suetin first. It's simpler to start with than Doten, because water's more flexible. There should be a pond somewhere around here follow me. In an instant Naruto had darted off through the lifeless orchard and Manami scrambled to keep up. A few hours passed and Naruto was justifiably impressed with his protege's prowess. The scroll he'd given her was filed with suetin ninjutsu for me to see rank and within such a short time she'd managed to not only perform each of the techniques inscribed on the rough parchment but even gone so far as to master a few of the lower rank jutsu. If this was her ability at normal speed, Naruto mused, imagine just what she could accomplish should he teach her the Kage Bunshin training trick. He shuddered involuntarily. Uzumaki Dono. Look out. Naruto leapt to the side just in time to dodge a suetin. Tepidama, the pressurized sphere of water crashing into the tree behind him with incredible force. The deceased construct of wood creaked noisily as it crashed to the ground. Naruto sweat dropped. Sorry about th that I need to learn better control. It's fine, Naruto assured her, waving away her apology. You've made amazing progress today, so you're probably just tired. You should take a break. No. Dot dot I mean, I just want to try one more time please. The pleading look in her eyes was heartbreaking. Naruto sighed, but nodded reluctantly. Minami smiled shyly and moved back in the direction of the surprisingly deep pool of water that Naruto had led her to. She'd already removed her shoes and socks and stepped into the water as that it reached up to her shins. Her slight fingers ran through complex hand seals, and with a quick flash of chakra, the water began to mold into shapes between her hands. With a look of deep concentration on her face, she shaped the clear fluid into a curved spike that shot out of the pool and cut through at least five of the trees before finally exploded into a violent spray of chakra-laced water. That was the Sugaden down, Naruto thought, laughing quietly. Very nice. He looked up at the sky and frowned. Looks like it's getting dark. I think that's enough for today, but we can try again tomorrow if you'd like. Yes. The Taki Kanoichi said quickly, but soon shrunk in on herself once more. I I mean, if it's not too much trouble. What are you doing? Minami shivered as the cool voice of her tenant echoed in her ears. Her foot slipped on the grass, wet with dew, and she scrambled wildly to regain her balance. Her head turned to either side, but, seeing nothing, she carried on her chosen path. You heard the boy. He said to wait till tomorrow. You're tired, you need your rest. I can't wait. 
I have to show him how strong I can be. Are you blind? He can see your strength. You don't need to prove yourself to him. Manami groaned quietly and tuned out the Nanabi. She decided what she was going to do, and there was no changing her mind. She'd learn the jutsu Naruto had given her, all of them, and she'd show him that she was strong. Of course, where her thoughts turned from there brought a bright crimson blush to her dark cheeks. She was thankful for the dark of midnight that hid her embarrassment from any others that might be awake at this ungodly hour. Before she'd even realized, the pool was before her. She kicked off her shoes and peeled her long, white socks from her slender legs, before unbuttoning her shirt and pushing down her skirt and placing them with the rest of her clothing. Then, her fingers went to the clasp of her bra and unclepped it, and, along with her panties, dropped it to the side as she slowly descended into the icy cold water, shivering as the frigid liquid brushed against her bare skin, raising goosebumps. Thakur radiated from her in a bright aura of azure, flowing into the water and forming it into hundreds of thin tendrils that slowly swayed about her naked form. Is using my chakra like this wise? What do you mean? There's no harm in it, right? We're on good terms, not like QB. The relationship between Bijuu and Jinchuriki is irrelevant. Our Yaoki is poisonous to humans, through and through, and even on those who are adapted to our power it's still dangerous. It'll be fine, I just need it to get used to forming the chakra, then I can use my own supply, once I've got the shape manipulation down. As long as you know the risks. She took a deep breath as the chakra gathered in front of her, rising in a spire of water that twisted and turned in that air, the clear liquid rapidly filling out the dark grin of a suetan. Sir Uedin, at serpentine body hovering over her malevolently. It opened and closed its spike jaws noiselessly, dipping its long, fluid body down to rest its head in her outstretched hand, as if it were alive. Manami was amazed. The Sir Uedin was in B-rank ninjutsu, yet it had come so naturally as soon as she'd added Chame's chakra into the mix, as if the water had just naturally reacted to the presence of the Nanabi no Kabutamushi's unearthly energy. She wondered idly how easily other jutsu might come to her with this power, and, in experimentation, threw her arm out to the side. A barrage of watery projectiles shot from the pool's rippling surface and filled the air with a thick fog of chakra as it radiated from their liquid bodies. The fangs of water colliding heavily with the forest and tearing a chunk through the dead wood with a horrendous crash. A quintet of azure sharks burst from the deep pond with a violent spray as the chakra necessary for the powerful suetan. Gashakism bled through her system. Elsewhere, Naruto's eyes shot open with a start. His ears perked as the sound of rushing water permeated through the night air, silent to all but him, and the hairs on his limbs bristled as the thick haze of demonic energy brushed against his skin. He rolled Kurumu's body off of his just when had she appeared. Without waking the slumbering succubus and leapt from the bed, pulling on his clothes with an urgency he didn't often feel. He didn't bother sealing his gloves, instead choosing to pull them over his fists as he prepared himself for battle, no matter the source of the power, with the sheer amount they were releasing a fight was inevitable. Instead of wasting time with the door, he leapt from the open window and into the night, crimson bleeding from his chakra capillaries, as he began to steadily release his own demonic power in a scarlet mist around his body. His eyes closed mid-fall as he began to search for the source of the opposing chakra, and instantly a flare lit up in his mind. He knew who was causing this. Lanami he stopped on the roof of the school building. From this point, looking over the edge of the tall structure, he could see what had once been the small, yet deceptively deep pond, where only days prior he'd saved Yukari from being devoured by lizard men, and where a few hours earlier he'd been training Manami in Suiten Ninjutsu. Deep gouges were torn in the earth as the pool had been expanded outwards, filled with water that still seemed to pour from some unknown source. Suiten. The Kusui Shao had the B rank jutsu was the only explanation for this. No other technique, save its derivative, the Daibakusui Shaoha, could create such a high volume of water, yet it didn't have the signature spherical shape. His eyes, blaring red stained with orange, scanned the crashing waves for his quarry. Rah. His search abruptly came to an end as a shape, made indistinguishable by the flaring chakra that surrounded its form, burst from the water's surface, spewing small yet impossibly fast spheres of rushing water from its gaping maw, the large gap between its knife-like teeth, glowing a brilliant white. His form blurred from existence as he evaded the attack with incredible speed and appeared before the beast of chakra with another static buzz, his gloved fist slamming into its face with all the power of a freight train. The powerful blow sent the creature back into the depths and into the ground below with an almighty explosion, throwing large shards of broken earth into the air in a cloud of dust. In that instant, Naruto saw something that caused his eyes to narrow dangerously. The creature's body, formed from a shapeless black substance whirling with royal blue, had an awkward appearance. Six angular limbs protruded from its sides, armed with spikes and a large horn from its face. It had been held aloft by two pairs of large insectoid wings that buzzed incessantly as it flew. But what had caused this sudden seriousness had been the four, thick tails of blue chakra that swayed behind it. 
So, you used too much of the Nanabi's chakra, did ya? He yelled down as Manami, surrounded by the cloak of her Bijuu's four-tailed chakra mode, climbed from the raging depths to stand atop the water, her six limbs alight with chakra. Her jaw opened impossibly wide as chakra gathered before her, Naruto's eyes widening in shock. He threw up his arms in front of him, but it was too late as the sphere of solid chakra exploded outwards in a wide beam that tore through the academic building and continued on past it, lighting the sky with a malevolent glow, as its deadly chakra slowly began to dissipate into the air. TCH. Naruto scoffed, dropping noiselessly to the ground behind his wayward student, not a scratch on him, though he dusted off his shoulders. His body glowed with a golden hue as the Nine Tails chakra mode washed over his body, his gleaming silhouette flickering like flames as the black seals coursed over his skin, and twin rippled pools of mysterious lilac appeared in place of his usual sapphire orbs. The tailed beast ball that Minami no, the Nanabi, had released had been powerful and had charged far more quickly than his own. The egg the beast growled softly as it breathed in the soft mist of golden power that Naruto exuded naturally, shuddering slightly from the influx of such power. In an instant it had shot forward, throwing forward its front pair of limbs at Naruto's exposed route, though falling short as Naruto's hand closed around its face, gripping its head tightly with one set of glowing fingers. Rinnegan eyes watched as the Nanabi scrabbled helplessly against his vice-like grip with the small curved claws that tipped its legs. He raised his free hand, charged with chakra as a Rasengan quickly formed in his golden palm, but something caught his eye and stopped him. He looked on in surprise as one of the Nanabi's outer tails began to split in two, forming two identical tails of chakra and bringing the total up to five. This wasn't the only change, however. Along with the sudden increase in the Bijuu's usable chakra came a new transformation, much like the six-tailed form he'd undergone during his battle with pain. Pieces of deep blue, almost black, armor hovered over its body, its surface round and glossed like a beetle's exoskeleton, the large horn encased in even more of the thick black plating. It bucked against his hand and tore its horned head from his grasp with a roar, before circling on him with another charged Bijudama. Naruto raised his hands and charged his own golden orb in his palms, whips of otter light flailing through the air and tearing thin trenches in the earth. The two-tailed beast balls exploded outwards and clashed in a brilliant explosion of chakra, ripping the earth asunder with a blast. However, with all nine tails of the strongest Bijuu at his disposal, Naruto's own beam quickly won out over the Nanabi's attack and slammed into the beetle, throwing it far into the forest with a great crash as it ground through the dirt and trailed a deep trench behind it. As it slowed to a halt, Naruto appeared over it in another static buzz and slammed a foot forcefully onto its chest, sending deep cracks through the thick armor as it let out a choked gasp. Let go, he ordered, his voice twisted by the demonic chakra that coursed through his veins. As if following his command, the black armus burst into nothingness, and the black substance, still swirled with royal blue, began to retract into a single point on its midriff, revealing the bare chocolate brown skin underneath as the blackness returned to the form of her seal. Lanami shivered in the cold night air, hugging herself as her eyes slowly fluttered open, slowly rising to meet Naruto's rippled gaze. She watched the golden light that surrounded him fade into normality, his Rinnegan returning to their normal sapphire blue, and blushed as he looked down at her in concern. Are you okay? Yeah I th think so she stuttered. Why was it so cold, even with her body heating up from embarrassment? She saw Naruto's own cheeks flush and her brow furrowed in confusion. She'd never seen him embarrassed her eyes followed his and traveled down to her own body. Her blush slowly changed from a light pink to a bright, overwhelming red as she saw her own state of undress and of course, did the one thing that any girl would were they in the same situation. She screamed. Good morning, Naruto-kun. Mocha said happily as she stepped over to him, the blonde himself slowly sliding into his seat in homeroom the next morning. He looked up at her smiling face and noticed that Manami was stood beside her, looking down shyly. Mocha's hand was closed firmly around her bicep, obviously having dragged the bashful Jinchuriki to the object of her affection. The teenage vampire saw Naruto's worried look toward her companion and frowned. Is something wrong? No, nothing. How are you today, Manami-chan? She blushed at the affection suffix. I am fine. Th thank you for e everything you've done for me. Mocha arched an eyebrow, yet was afforded no explanation. Naruto waved away her thanks nonchalantly. Don't mention it. After all, your training's far from over. There's still so many other Suiten Jutsu for you to learn, and we haven't even begun to learn Doten. Manami paled and staggered backwards. For a moment she feared the events of the previous night would repeat themselves, but somehow she was reassured by Naruto's wide grin. The power he'd displayed was incredible, and he hadn't appeared to put any effort into the battle whatsoever. He truly was the warrior that the stories had made him out to be. She looked about the classroom for a moment. The destruction caused by their battle had been gone by the morning, without a single trace that she'd ever lost control of the Nanabi's chakra. 
the deep gouge her tailed beast ball had taken out of the building had been filled, and the enormous crater that the clash of their combined Pijuadama was completely non-existent. Was this the power of the school's headmaster? Aheyo, Naruto Kuwo. Kurumu cried as she leapt over several tables, Yukari quick in tow, and collided with Manami's back. The Jinchuriki's eyes widened as she tumbled forward and fell directly into Naruto's lap, blushing brightly as her body pressed against his. Kurumu's eyes lit up in anger as she tore Manami from her destined one and leapt into his lap instead. Out of the way, hussy. He's mine, eh her. Her arm snaked around Naruto's neck and pulled his head into her cleavage. The blonde shot a pleading look at Sai, who appeared at Mocha's side with a smile, but to no avail. Yukari scowled and tackled Naruto herself. Shut it, cow tits. Naruto-kun's mine, Dezu. Kurumu and Yukari glared at each other, even as Mocha grabbed both of them and, displaying her impressive physical strength, threw them across the room and descended gracefully into Naruto's lap herself. Nope, still mine. Her head tilted upwards as Naruto's cheeks lit up in a pale blush. Her lips parted, baring her sharp fangs as she bit lightly into the flesh of his neck. Kapuchu. Are you freaking kidding me? So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.